Hey, what's up everybody? Today we are talking Linux apps, and I don't mean Linux apps that come on your Chromebook. We're gonna look at installing a full distribution of Linux. A uh, recent update to the container on Chrome OS has allowed some devices to uh, leverage virtual machines and QEMU and stuff. So we're gonna take a look at exactly how to do that. So let's dive right in. All right guys, let's get started. All right, for starters, you're obviously going to need a Chromebook that supports Linux apps. Uh, we'll have a link down on the bottom to show you a list of devices that are compatible. Uh, if you just wanna check real quick, all you have to do is go to your Chrome OS settings, and on the left side, there should be a thing that says Linux Beta. If it's there, you have Linux apps, no problem. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and turn that on. Click Next. Now under here, you're gonna see disk size. You're gonna to need to set that to at least 25 to 30 gigs. Uh, just to make room for the Linux distribution that we're going to use and then any other apps that you may want to want to install. Uh, your username, you can set it to whatever you want. So we'll do Chrome Unboxed here. Click Install. And that's going to take just a minute for Linux to set up. And then once it's done, we're going to start installing the pieces that we're going to need to use to run the actual Linux distribution. Uh, we're going to do MX Linux today. Uh, we've done this a few times here in the office. We've done Elementary OS, Pop OS, uh, did Manjaro the other day. Uh, DistroWatch rates MX Linux as the number one Linux distribution on the market. Uh, it's Debian based, so it should work really well with Chrome OS because that's the same thing that's running in the container. Uh, and once we get this installed, you can actually tinker around with it and just find ISO files of whatever distro you want and try it out to see if it works. So now that our terminal up and running we're gonna run a couple of commands just to make sure everything is up to date so we'll do sudo apt update that's gonna let us know if that there are any upgrades available and there are so you'll do sudo apt upgrade and then if you do a dash Y it will automatically uh, click yes for you or you can just hit enter and click yes when it gets there that's gonna take just another minute and then we will move on to the next step uh, if you haven't checked it out already, there's multiple articles on the website that list how to do this. And in each one, it shows the commands on how to install the virtual machine manager. Uh, and if you feel like you're worried about breaking something, don't worry about it. The Linux container is separate from Chrome OS. And if something doesn't work, you can literally turn off Linux, delete all of the files and start over from scratch like it never happened. So this is gonna take another minute or so to finish. And then uh, once it's done, we'll move on to installing the virtual machine manager. All right, all our updating is done is now, now we can move on to the next step. Uh, once this is finished and your terminal is installed, you'll have a new folder in your file manager and it just says Linux files. And that's exactly what it is. These are files that are created by Linux applications. And if you need to access other files on your device, you can drag them directly into that folder um, or you can give access to your downloads folder. When we're doing installations like this, I like to put my files in the Linux folder. That way there's no path conflicts or anything like that. Uh, so today we're gonna install MX Linux. So you can find the, uh, the current stable version on SourceForge. We'll put a link down in the description to show you how to grab that. All right, so you're gonna download that. It's gonna take a couple minutes because this is an ISO image, so it's almost two gigs. It's a operating system compressed into an image. So it's gonna go to your downloads folder, drag that over to your Linux folder and Give that a minute to transfer over. And while that's doing that, let's go ahead and get our installation of our virtual machine manager started. Uh, it's gonna install a few different files. This works off QEMU and KBM. It's nested virtual machines and all that stuff. Virtual machine manager is actually the application, the user interface we're going to use to install and run the image. Uh, for Linux desktop. Now how this works, it's actually taken a portion of your hard drive and it's going to dedicate that for the Linux distribution. So you're actually gonna have a full version of Linux running on a portion of your hard drive. The Virtual Machine Manager allows Chrome OS to look at that distribution. So it's treating it like an offsite host, but it's just running here on your device. So think about remote desktops and things like that. Very similar situation, it's just the other operating system happens to be running on the same machine that you're using. So we can install all of the files that we need in one fell swoop, and I've got the command in here, it'll be in the article, we'll have it down in the uh, comments below. You're gonna open your Linux terminal up, and you're going to copy and paste this command into your terminal, 
and hit enter and that is going to install everything that we need to run the virtual machine manager. All right guys, our installation is done and you should have a virtual machine manager in your app door. If you can't find it, uh, scroll down until you see a folder that says Linux files. Any of your Linux applications or files are gonna be in there. I have mine pinned to the shelf here just so I know where it's at. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're going to create a new virtual machine. Now the first time you do this, you may get an error saying there's no connection available. To fix that, just go to File, Add Connection, and change this from QEMU KVM to QEMU KVM User Session, and click Connect. That will create your local user session for you. We already have one started here, so we're going to click this icon to create a new virtual machine. We're going to do Local Install Media because we're using a local ISO image. Go next and go to browse and then browse local. And if you moved your uh, MX Linux or whatever ISO you're using over to your Linux folder, it should show up right there. Double click that. Now, unless it's a major distro that's recognized in here, it's not gonna detect that distribution automatically. So you're gonna deselect automatically detect and then just start typing generic. And we're gonna use generic default. It should work for pretty much any Linux distribution you use. Uh, go ahead and click forward. Now, depending on your device, uh, you're gonna want a lot as much RAM and CPU as you can afford to let go of. This is an i7 with 16 gigs, so we're gonna go ahead and give it quite a bit of memory. And then it says eight cores, which is kind of cool because in the past when I've done this, it only let me do four cores because hyper-threading doesn't work on Crostini and all that, but whatever. So it's gonna let me use eight cores, so that's what I'm gonna use. So we'll click forward and then it's going to ask you to allot an amount of disk space. You'll see you have 33 gigs available because that's based on the amount we set when we set up Linux. So I'm going to go ahead and give it 25 gigs, then click forward and you can leave all this as it is and then click finish. Now the virtual machine is going to fire up and it's going to start installing MX Linux on that partition that we created. This is gonna take a few minutes, but if you're familiar with Linux distributions, you'll know what to do. It's gonna walk you through the, the installation process just like it would with Windows, uh, Mac, or any other Linux distro out there. So we will just go ahead and select install and we're gonna go through the installation process. All right, so here we are, guys. This is the really cool thing about ISO images is most of them will actually run directly from the image. So instead of actually installing it on bare metal on your device, it's running from that image. So you can kinda poke around and see what you think about it. That way, if you decide MX Linux isn't the distro for you, you can just delete the virtual machine and start over with a diff different distribution. If you decide you like it, you can actually, most of these distributions, the live image will have an installer button on the desktop like this right here. You'll just click that. It'll go through the actual bare metal installation of it. You'll get your keyboard set up, your username and all of that stuff. And then you'll have a dual booting device per se right there in your hands and you can, uh, change and swap up any Linux distribution you want. Uh, we've actually installed Windows 10 on one of these and it works really well. Uh, you don't have to worry about network connectivity. Um, the, Linux, the virtual machine inherits uh, the internet from Chrome OS. Uh, you are gonna run into some issues when you're trying to share files with Chrome OS and things of that nature. So just think of this as a completely separate operating system. They are not, they're not working in tangent with each other. If you just wanna try out Linux or you just need Linux on a device for whatever reason, most of these pre-built distros come with uh, stores built in so you can go in there and install the Chromium browser so you can have more of a native Chrome OS feel if you want. But that's it guys, you can install this distro or one of dozens if you want. We'll be tinkering some more over the next few weeks to see what else we can try out and see which one works best. Uh, if you guys have any suggestions or there's something you'd like to see, drop a comment below or shoot us an email because I'd love to give it a try. Uh, until next time guys, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, don't forget to hit that notification bell down at the bottom because we're gonna be doing more and more of these command line videos and we want you guys to get alerted when we put one out. So until next time, We'll see you.